Welcome to Muppet World, where men are men and the dirt riding gumbies are nervous. Imagine riding in this country and trying to find grip with a shagged knobby at 16 PSI. Does this take a massive pair of testes? No, it takes a lazy tight ass and you are listening to one right now. Yep, I'm a tight ass. The Golden Tire GT216s that came standard on the Vita Cross Trainer are awesome tires with their soft compound and wide tread pattern. But after 40 hours, <laughs> there ain't much tread left on top and the leading edge is completely rounded off. You might ask, why don't I just drop my air pressure? Well, I've been too lazy to fit my tubeless system and thought I'd wait till I replace the knobbies. To make things worse, due to a lack of maintenance, the tyres have been slowly slipping on the rims and threatening to tear the valve stem from the tube. So, lazy bugger that I am, instead of fixing this, I just pumped both tyres up to 16 psi. This is double my normal air pressure, so it's making that rear shagged knobby even worse. Again, a chance to work on traction skills. Well, that's the theory. But I'm a starving YouTube artist, so I figured why not see how far I can go with a shagged knobby and work on my traction skills. So it's time to tackle some loose hills and single track. It will be interesting to see if Ben does better on the WR450F than the cross trainer with its dubious rear rubber. Just not enough momentum. That's the way to go, the way you went on it. Yeah, I don't want to dig the track up. Andrew's going my line. Yeah, she's a bit loose. Well, this high air pressure has definitely changed things. The cross trainer flew up this hill last time. Still, it's forcing me to work on technique, so all good. Ah, you bugger. Lost momentum. I think you've got it from there. This hill is tricky enough with good tyres and low air pressure. But Ben says I might get grip in a rut further up with the still intact side knobs on my rear tyre. Oh, I see what you mean about the deep rut. It's pretty deep, but I should get grip up this as long as it doesn't flip. Scotty isn't riding with us today, but he has often amazed us at how he crawls up technical climbs, just slipping the clutch, bouncing on the seat when he's stuck, and minimum wheel spin. It's a handy way to tackle this rut. So, that's handy to remember. If you are getting minimal traction, remember ruts can actually give you a lot more traction. You have to keep that rear wheel weighted for grip. But as the hills get steeper, the bike can start to wheelie. So it's a balancing act. Sometimes you need to lean forward to stop the bike flipping. At least I got it this time without falling off. Woo. 
You can see here, Andrew could sit a bit further back on the seat to weight the rear wheel. And the lack of weighting means a fair bit of wheel spin. So, is it fun riding with a shagged knobby and high air pressure? Ah, uh, yes and no. I do like how it's making me work a lot harder on technique. Keeping the rear wheel weighted, smooth throttle, clutch slipping, but man, it's hard work. <laughs> and we were stopping at the top of every climb as I fought to get my breath back. Oh, tree root! Ah! I had that in one go. Everyone will know I'm a firm believer in the theory of 80% the rider, only 20% the bike. Increasingly, I think it's the same with tyres. I've been riding with all sorts of brands the past seven years, and increasingly, I think many riders put way too much emphasis on the brand. Like many top extreme enduro riders, I would agree Golden Tire seems to be the best fit for technical riding. But I still think the 80-20 principle applies. Your skills will determine 80% of whether you get up that hill or not. Your choice or brand of tire will probably only be 20% of the equation. Oh man! Air pressure is extremely important though. I find that 6 PSI works best for our sort of riding, as long as we aren't doing any fast stuff over roots and ledges, which might ding the rims. And most of us now are using tubeless, which lets us run at this sort of softness, but minimises the chances of buggered rims. And I've ridden with shagged rear knobbies and the tubeless system. It's been amazing at what the bike will still climb. <laughs> Unlike today. So while it will still be skill, I do think air pressures are a very important part of the equation. We've done a whole vid on air pressure for more information. So there you have it, another glorious day in Muppet World with the dirt riding Gumbies. Yes, they have small testes, yes, they have equally small brains, but they are willing to push beyond the limits of normal tire wear due to their tight ass natures and inherent laziness. There is much to learn when it comes to dirt riding, and unfortunately, you are on completely the wrong YouTube channel for that. Good night, and God bless.